What's up guys? So a while back I did a video on talking to ChatGPT about what it knows about our cars, specifically my 2017 M3. I thought it was an interesting idea in the sense of talking to like a large language model AI system about, you know, the differences in models and engine types and suggestions for performance upgrades. Actually, that was kind of cool. Anyway, it was interesting, but I'm not sure how practical that information was in your day-to-day -day car owning life. And so I thought, you know, what would be a more practical way to integrate ChatGPT into car ownership or car maintenance? What if you did a scan of all the error codes that are happening behind the scenes in your car, because there's always some, gave that to ChatGPT, and then had it translate it into something a little bit more meaningful, tell you what might have triggered it, and even suggest maybe how you could fix it. So that's what we're gonna do today. So these behind the scenes errors that happen that don't necessarily throw a check engine light or an iDrive message on your dashboard, there's still something going on behind the scenes and there's always some, sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it's maybe something that could lead to something that will eventually throw a message. But the problem is, is that despite, you know, cars being more modern and scanning tools being, you know, more modern, sometimes the descriptions that go along with the error codes still aren't that descriptive about what's actually happening, especially if you're not familiar with the module. It pretty much never tells you why the message was thrown, and it definitely doesn't tell you how you might be able to fix it. So again, let's get this information, give it to ChatGPT, and see if it can help us out. And to do this, I'm gonna use this VPeak OBD2 Bluetooth scanner, relatively inexpensive. You can get them on Amazon for like 25 bucks or so, link in the description below. And then for the scanning tool, I'm gonna use Beamerlink. It's an app for your phone. You can get it for iOS and Android, and it's a great tool for doing the ECU scanning and seeing about those errors. It does some other stuff too, like you can build a dashboard of sensors that you can monitor in real time. Uh, you can turn off burbles. You can turn off active sound design, which is those fake ass engine sounds they pump through the speakers. Um, you can open and close the valves on your exhaust, which I'm not 100% sure why you do that through the app, because if you have a valved exhaust, you have the button on your console that does that. So again, I don't know why you'd want to do that on your phone, but you can. But anyway, we're just going to use it to scan for any error codes, give that information to chat GPT and see if it can help us figure out what's going on with the car in a more understandable way. Mandatory disclaimer, anytime you hook up anything to your car's computer and try to read or write data to it, you run the risk of bricking the system, which would be really bad. Now, the chances of that actually happening are near zero, but they're not zero. So it's worth pointing out that if you're doing anything like that, use caution. I don't know how, but just use caution. And the other thing is that while the Beamer link is a great application for doing what we're going to try to do today, it is not nearly as in-depth as, say, an ITSA tool. The stuff they can see is way more in-depth, but still, for the at-home, you know, DIY person who wants to just kind of get an idea about what's going on behind the scenes, it is still a really good tool for that. Okay, so we're gonna take our OBD2 scanner out, hook it up. All right, so that's hooked up. Another thing, don't forget, plug in the seat belt so that if the scanning takes a long time, your car doesn't shut off in the middle of it. All right, start the car, but don't actually start it. So make sure the Bluetooth is on, connected to the car. All right, so from the menu here, you can see that we got a couple of different things that we can do here. Oh, the other thing, the other cool thing you can do is register a new battery. So whenever you put a new battery in your BMW, it has to be registered for that to work. You can do that with this app. But we're gonna pay attention to these three sections down here, which is error memory, info memory, and permanent errors. So real quick description of these error memory is, these are kind of the things that are happening behind the scenes that could actually be a problem, some things that you might wanna pay attention to. Info memory is less important. Usually there's gonna be more of these, and this is kind of more of like, um, not really a big deal, but this could amount to something in the future. Permanent errors are the bad ones. So these are the ones that you don't wanna see. They could typically be the ones that eventually throw a check engine light or an iDrive message. So we're gonna start with error memory. Load that up. Everything is selected. So these are all the modules it's going to scan. They're all selected by default. So hit continue. And it's gonna start reading the errors. As it starts, as it increments, you can see the number of errors that it'll find. So far at 70%, oh, there you go, got one. So as it increments, it'll find errors and we'll see how many we get to by the end. Okay, so we got 13 errors found. So we have the central gateway module, the motor electronics, car access system, vertical dynamics management, that sounds bad. All right, so what we're gonna do is save this information and we'll use this PDF that it exports in order to give to ChatGPT. So I'm gonna tap the file button at the top right creates a nice little uh, PDF here that we can then export. So I'm gonna hit the share button at the bottom. And then from here, I can email it, I can do an airdrop, I can Dropbox it or you know, whatever. So save to files. So we'll leave it its formatted name, which is error memory and then today's date. So that's done, so I'm gonna go back. 
And now we'll do the info memory. So let's go ahead and continue with that. Okay, so 59 errors found. Let's go ahead and export that. Do the same thing. Let's just save this to files. Default name. Back. Back. Now for the big one, permanent errors. And this is where we really kind of hope there's nothing. Again, everything is checked by default. So let's do our scan of permanent errors. Sweet, no errors found. All right, everything looks good. Okay, so we got the errors exported out of Beamerlink. So before we go to ChatGPT, let's take a quick look at the PDF file that it generates. And we can see how some of these descriptions are not really that helpful. Okay, so we're starting with the first one, which is the central gateway module. So here we have code CD0487, synchronization process failed, CC was not yet synchronized when the error memory lock was released. I, I don't know what that means, do you? Motor electronics, so we have two errors here. We have, ex actually, that's interesting. So here's why that's interesting. When I upgraded the exhaust to the Valvetronic, one of the actuators is not used, and so the cable that goes to that actuator, well, the actuator was unplugged, and it's just kind of not connected to anything, so it's being interpreted as an open line or short circuit to ground, so I think if I can find like a cap for that or something, I don't know if it'll take care of the error, but at the very least, it would prevent it being exposed to the elements. Car access system, multifunction steering wheel, missing lens slave, vertical dynamics management, wheel acceleration, sensor, front right, sensor two, value below threshold. The problem here is that we don't know when these things were triggered, we don't know why they were triggered, and we definitely don't know how to potentially fix them. Okay, so these are the errors that were in the error memory, so they're a little bit more of the higher priority. So let's see what's doing in the info memory section. So we have, again, central gateway module. Commissioning could not be carried out because TAS is already busy. DM software error and for warning. Reversing in emergency mode. Terminal 15 shut down via timeout. Okay, so now we're gonna take this info and paste it into ChatGPT, but with a prompt. So it's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to get too far into what ChatGPT prompts are, but basically it makes ChatGPT exponentially more powerful. And if you are using ChatGPT and not using prompts, you should really look into this area. So in our case, I'm telling ChatGPT that I have a 2017 BMW M3 that I did an OBD2 diagnostic scan on, got a bunch of errors that I'm going to send to it in the following format, and because it's it's formatted by you know which the, the name of the module, the number of errors, the error code, and the description. Then I'm going to tell it that for each one, I wanted to translate the error into something that's a little bit more plain English. What might have triggered that error? Provide one or two the suggestions for maybe troubleshooting the error. And if you can, give me an idea of the severity of the error. Is it a big deal? Is it not a big deal? And then finally, if a module has multiple errors, and if you if it appears that those errors are related, do an overall assessment of what might be going on with that module. So that's the prompt that I wrote up that we're gonna use for this. I will paste it in the description below in case you wanna use it or modify it to your liking. So let's go ahead and prompt chat GPT and then paste our info, see how it goes. Okay, so here's our prompt telling it what kind of car I have, everything we just went through. So I'm pasting this information exactly as is out of the report. The only thing I did was remove the page numbers, but otherwise it is as is. So here is the first set. Okay, so here's our list. So let's scroll back up to the top and start with the first set, the central gateway module. So the original error description we have here. So it's saying that the central gateway module acts as a traffic cop for data communication within the vehicle. This error suggests that there's been a hiccup in the data synchronization process, which may have been triggered by a software glitch or a transient communication failure between modules. Mm -hmm. Moderate, not critical, but it could potentially affect other systems. So to troubleshoot, maybe perform a software reset by disconnecting the battery for about 15 minutes and then reconnecting it and checking for firmware updates. Now I know that my car's firmware is up to date, so performing a system reset might be a plausible option. Now here we go with the exhaust flap actuator signal line. I know why that's caused because it's not connected to anything, but let's see what ChatGPT thinks the problem is. So both of these errors relate to the exhaust flap actuator. The first error suggests an open circuit. The second suggests a short circuit to the ground, obviously. That one, the description was a little bit more understandable. Likely wiring issues or a faulty actuator. Faulty in the sense the actuator is not hooked up. Moderate to high severity. A malfunctioning exhaust system could affect performance and emissions. Well, that is true. Troubleshooting. Expect the wiring of the exhaust flap actuator for any obvious signs of damage or, you know, that it's missing. Uh, and consider replacing the actuator if it appears faulty. Skip down to driver's footwell module. So this is related to wake-up inputs and seat heating switch. 
multiple errors. Plain English, these errors deal with a blocked wake-up input and an issue with the right rear seat heating switch, possible wiring issue, or a stuck button. Low to moderate severity, so inspect the wiring associated with the seat heating switch and check if any buttons are visibly stuck and try to unstick them. That's something that would be easy to check. And then finally, we have vertical dynamics management. So this sensor that helps manage your car's vertical dynamics, like suspension adjustments, is not reading correctly. Possible faulty sensor or poor connection. Moderate to high severity because it has to do with driving dynamics. Check the wiring going to the sensor, and if no visible issues, consider replacing the sensor. And hopefully this helps you get a handle on what's going on with your M3. After tackling these, you can move on to the info memory errors. Okay, so I got that list ready to go. Again, same thing, copy this directly out of the PDF and just remove the page number. Now, I've noticed that it isn't exactly going error by error. It kind of has, it's taken the latter sort of request to do an overall assessment if it thinks that the errors are related instead of going line by line. So. With that, I would say, if you wanted to, paste these errors one at a time if you want more specificity out of each individual error, potentially, because I don't think that what it's suggesting as a troubleshooting method is going to apply for all of them necessarily, especially when it comes to the integrated chassis management, but could be wrong. I'm reaching the limit of what I can put in a single message, so I'll continue with the other systems in a follow-up response. Would you like to proceed? Of course. That was a lot. Each of these modules can have an impact on varying degrees on your driving experience. Some are critical, like motor electronics, while others are more about comfort. Okay, so let's go through a couple of these. We won't do them all in the interest of time. But see, so here has our car access system. So here we have multiple errors, all related to the Lynn Slaves, the local interconnect network. Plain English, these errors indicate issues with the car's access system, like the key fob, steering wheel controls, most likely electrical or connectivity problems. Low to moderate, not critical, but annoying. Haven't really noticed anything in my car, but could be wrong. Uh, repair your key fob with the car. I don't know if that's necessary. Check lens connections for any loose wires or signs of corrosion. Overall assessment, you've got a string of issues, likely communication related, that can affect various comfort and convenience features. So I'm not really, haven't really noticed anything weird on the inside of the car, but again, some of these could be transient, so we'll see. Uh, here we have the left and right headlight driver module that I noted in before that had some language that I couldn't understand, clearly German. But plain English, both headlight modules are throwing cold warnings and resets. This could affect headlight positioning and range, which could be triggered by cold weather effects or stepper motor failure. Well, it hasn't really been cold, but then again, I don't know when this error has happened. It could have been... It could have been two years ago, so certainly it might have happened last year when it was really cold out. Moderate severity affects night driving safety. Uh, check for corrosion in the headlight connector, and if the issue persists, consider replacing the stepper motors in the headlight. All right, let's go to the head unit radio. So your head unit thinks it's contaminated from the outside, which is peculiar. I love that it included that. Could be a sensor issue or actual contamination. Low because it primarily affects entertainment. Clean the head unit and surrounding areas and check if there's a calibration or a reset option. Okay, so we got a better understanding of what's going on with different parts of the car here, but one of the things that I kept seeing in terms of why these errors were triggered were transient errors. So transient errors are errors that get triggered for maybe a reason that isn't necessarily indicative of an actual problem or a failing module or something. Could be just a momentary software glitch, too much congestion in the local network. Um, it could be the bad cell connection. So if I was driving somewhere that was out of range and it tried to you know, ping back for a firmware update or something like that, that it wasn't able to connect. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is use Beamer Link to clear all of the errors, which it can do, which is pretty awesome, and then go for a short drive and then come back and do a rescan and anything that persists are ones that are sort of upfront in terms of real issues with the car. Because again, some of these could have been old, could have been triggered ages ago, could have been fixed by things that have since been serviced, who knows. So let's go back, clear all of the error codes in both error memory and info memory, do a little drive, another scan, and we'll see what we got left over. Now, the thing is, is that in order to clear the errors, you have to rescan again so that you have access to the trash can icon at the top right of the screen. Okay, so the scan is done, clear errors. Clearing failed, not all errors could be cleared. Please try again. One error found, motor electronics. Oh, exhaust flap actuator. So we know that couldn't be cleared because the signal line is open. So we're not gonna worry about that one, no big deal. So we'll let that one go. But now let's go into the info errors. Rescan. Okay, so here's our 59 errors. Let's go ahead and clear them. 
again, couldn't clear everything, probably because of the exhaust flap actuator. Also the air mass meter electrical fault or air mass implausible. Okay, so some of these we couldn't clear. Let me double check. Let me try again to clear, even though I know the exhaust flap actuator cannot clear. Yep, can't do it, so, okay. So again, motor electronics, we have a couple of errors that are gonna persist here. We'll keep note of those. Go ahead and save those off so I know which ones were there before. Okay, so with that, let's go for a drive and then we'll rescan both of them again. Fire Steve, anytime you come to Total Wine, look for Fire Steve, Pinot Noir, best stuff ever. And lately they don't have it. All right, beer run complete. Go back and rescan some America. Hopefully they'll all be gone. How lucky could we be? Very much yes, pony boy. Okay, so we cleared all the errors, went for a quick drive slash beer run. Now we're gonna rescan starting with the error memory and see if any of those errors came back. We know we have the one from the exhaust flap line, but that's fine. Exhaust valve line, actuator line, whatever. That one's fine, so let's see if anything new pops up. Nothing new, just that one error in motor electronics, which again, exhaust flap actuator signal line open. We know about that one. So we are good to go there. So let's go back to the info memory, do another scan there, and see if there's anything left over. Remember, there were 10 errors that we were unable to clear from the original pass. So we'll see what happens now. All right, so we got 23 found. Let's go ahead and save these off. All right, guys, well, I got my list of errors to go back in and reconsult with ChatGPT, but hopefully this gave you some kind of idea for how to integrate ChatGPT into your car maintenance, some of your DIY stuff. So I hope you found this helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.